everyone, I'm Scott Briard, and welcome to another episode of This Is Darts. Now, what a great opportunity to do another show. It's been a while, and I know a lot of you have sent some emails through wondering what's happening. But uh, today, on the phone with me right now, five-time Canadian champion Bob Seneva is with me. We're going to talk a little bit about Bob's previous professional career in darts through the 80s and 90s, and a little bit about, uh, about what he's doing now. So on the phone with me, Bob, can you hear me? Yes, I'm here. Hi, Bob. How are you? Fine, thank you. Good. Well, thank you. I, I greatly uh, appreciate you taking some time this weekend. I believe you're away at the cottage, are you? Yes, I'm down by Long Point uh, on Lake Erie and here for the weekend. Oh, wonderful. Well, I, I cannot thank you enough for, uh, for taking a bit of time. I'm sure it's beautiful out down there, and I'm, I'm sure the last thing you want to do is being tied up on your phone. But um, I know we definitely have a lot of interested dart players to... Uh, Maybe some new players that are not too familiar with all the great accomplishments uh, that you had back in the 80s and 90s, um, and maybe a little bit about where you are now in darts. If you don't mind, we'll just have a, a bit of a quick chat about things, and I, I think everybody would be excited to, uh, to hear your story. That'd be great. Good. So, Bob Sineev, five-time Canadian champion. When did you start playing? When was uh, the first time you remember picking up a set of darts, and how did you get exposed to the game? Well, um, I started in the in the early 70s. Um, actually, my wife's uncle talked us into trying it out on a Friday night at a local club, the Belgian Dart Club. And uh, one thing led to another, you know, going to small tournaments, working your up, my way up to the bigger tournaments, then provincials, then nationals. Uh, I believe it was 1978 was the first nationals that I went to. Fantastic. It was, it was, it was a very, very uh, quick rise. I, I, I will say that I had a fair amount of natural ability to start with, which with success you always want to do better, and so that's why things progressed like they did as quickly as they did. Now, so let's cap some of the highlights, because when I first started playing, 1987, 88, when I started getting involved in the Organized Youth League, I mean, you were the the greatest North American player at that time. Um, a lot of great things you accomplished um, through that era that I, I believe you're probably quite humble about, but I mean, you were the first North American to reach a final in England of a major tournament, correct? Yeah, they, and I think it was 95, 80, 85 and 86 that I made four finals in one year. Wow. The World, World Masters, World Match Play, Boston's Grand Masters, and the World Cup. Yeah, 86, 87. And, uh, you know, those are, those are very exciting times. And obviously at that time, I, by being that successful, I jumped up to number four in the world. Right. Now, back then, you, I mean, you traveled a lot to England. There's a great story, and maybe you can uh, comment a little bit on it. Your son was born while you were in England at one of the tournaments. Is that correct? Yes, we flew over just after Christmas for the uh, World Professional, which was run by the BDO at the time. Um, my wife was only, I think, it's, uh, six, six months along. And due to travel and other complications, she delivered our son uh, uh, basically at two pounds. She's had to stay over there three months until he got to be at least five pounds to be able to travel back home. Uh, very nerve-wracking, especially for my wife, Judy. She, uh, she, uh, she definitely had to become very independent very quickly. Right. Well, what a great story, though. I'm sure your son enjoys telling uh, how Dad was in England for a World Dart Championship, and, uh, and there he was born over there. Well, he's, he's, and, but now he's happy and healthy, and he's, I hate to ask, he must be in his 20s, is he? Well, actually, he turned 30 this year, wow. and he works for an accountant firm uh, not too far from where we live in Tilson, it's called Bossy Group, and he's an accountant. Wonderful. And, and he, he does very well. He, he has a fair amount of natural ability, but he doesn't have that drive or desire to excel in the sport. Uh, he enjoys it, uh, just the, the focus that you need to have. Uh, that's the only thing he'd have to really train on to, to move to the next level from where he is now. Right. No, not a lot of people, I believe, will remember this, but I do. Um, you're the only Canadian dart player, I believe, to ever have a video made, and I, I wish I could find a copy of it, but I'm sure we can dig something up on eBay. Yourself and J.J. Jardine made a dart video back in the 80s. Is that correct? Yes, it is. It was called Winning Darts. Um, yep. uh, unfortunately, they, they, they made a fair amount, number of, of the videos itself, but I'm not sure exactly how many. Um, and like I say, uh, it came out towards the mid to late uh, 80s, and then obviously in 1992, the, the February 92, I decided to back away from the sport. Now, why was that? I'm curious, and I, I was playing quite competitively through the youth and um, through the leagues, and, at the, and it, was, um, it was a strange thing. It was like you just hadn't registered that year for the provincials, and 
what uh, what changed your mind and what uh, what developed? Well, um, if everybody's aware, back in the late '80s, the uh, anti-smoking aspect uh, really kicked in, which was good for you know for health-wise for everybody really. But uh, it definitely um, took away uh, a lot of the sponsorships and so forth uh, throughout North America. In the uh, in the states, there was a big circuit. There it was it was uh, main sponsor was Lucky Strikes, which was a cigarette company, and and it, it uh, they pulled out, and so prize money dropped off very quickly, and just the cost, and obviously uh, the extent of traveling that I was doing, uh, and the well, my my son was starting to get to that age level where I wanted to be more around him too. So the family plus uh, prize money dropping off, and just burnout was the, the main reasons why I backed away. Yeah, I re- well, I remember it was a, a number seven Canadian championship that was sponsored by the. The number seven. A lot of beer sponsorships, I believe, were involved back then, and alcohol sponsorships that uh, the Fosters Open and different things that we had. That uh, there were, there was quite a, a substantial loss. Now you're you're back on the scene. I I um I guess about a few years ago we started seeing your name pop up in some of the Bullseye News results from local tournaments and that. What brought you back to the game? Well, my son, he, he I never really had the opportunity to really watch me play a great deal, so he he sort of was sort of pushing for me to come back and. Uh, in 2008, I believe, there was a uh, PDC, which is a professional dark corporation event in Kitchener, and I went there as a spectator. I was I had a bad cold, and I had no intention of playing, but when I went, uh, did show up there, uh, met a few of the old guard that uh, were still playing, uh, made some new friends, and uh, sort of started to get the bud, but uh, within, like, I think, within three months, I was off to Chicago to play in the next uh, PDC event. I had a little bit of success, and of course, with success, the, the drive to... Uh, see how good you could get again, so to speak, uh, sort of a spark. And of course, my son uh, loved to watch me play, and, uh, and it, it sort of fired him up as well to try and prove. Uh, and so that's one thing led to another. Uh, within within two years, uh, back on the circuit pretty well, uh, almost full time, not quite full time in 2010. Now, do you see a big difference in? Um uh, and dart scoring and numbers and averages that people are throwing compared to back in the late 80s and 90s. If you take a look, if you take a look at golf, I mean, technology has really changed that game. People are able to drive the ball further, uh, better clubs, better technology. Darts technology hasn't changed, but have you noticed a real great growth in the playability? The, the, really, there has been substantial changes in the actual dart board and the darts themselves. Obviously, the person still has to, like, like in golf, you have to learn the swing and with the with dart delivery and so forth. But the technology of the darts themselves, the, the design, especially the flight systems, plus the boards, they've changed substantially with regards to going with their with the wire boards rather than a a uh, wire um, like a thin wire board or a thin thin wire. So mm-hmm. they actually increased the surface area for scoring, and so that's one of the reasons uh, that you start seeing a lot more 180s perfect games than you used to. Because you you have actually you have, actually have a larger landing area than you did back in the eighties. Well, that's a, a great analogy. I I guess I never put the two together, but you are right that I mean darts are still darts. They're still the weight has never changed. The points are still the same size. But yet I, you know what? I it never even crossed my mind. But yeah, certainly with a blade for uh, thinner wires has opened up the the playing surface for uh, for more one eighties. Great, uh, great thought to that. Now, you're involved um, with one of the Japanese companies that are manufacturing the shaft and flight system. Tell me a little about how you got involved with, uh, with them. Well, it, was, it was two years ago. I was in Vegas at a tournament in uh, L-Style, who's the flight and shaft manufacturer. They, they approached me um, by, by recommendation from another t- uh, touring player that was sponsored by them. And uh, so they signed up for a contract uh, on the day to use their flights, but uh, at the very first tournament, uh, I played it, you know, it, 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 again, the design changes in flights and shafts and so forth. The dart was still the same, but it just it gave me a new uh, perspective as far as how to improve your game, and uh, it did definitely uh, change my uh, my scoring and uh, accuracy. The other, the other sponsor I got as well, I just picked them up this January, again, in, in, or in, in Vegas, was uh, Monster. They're, they're actually a, a dart manufacturer of the barrels itself. So they're, they're both companies are from Japan. 
It's amazing. What I, I think has been a great thing about uh, the technology L style, Cosmo and such have, is for the home player, um, buying standard flights that they have for the last 30, 40 years, um, since the, the introduction of flights from the, the old feather, turkey feather flights, um, said they break so easily. And a home consumer, the last thing they want to do is have to head out to a dart store every month or every few months to buy more. Great for us as a dart store, but um, is that they can buy these, these L-style and Cosmo shaft and flight combinations and they'll last home consumers for years. So it's nice that, that something like that has been created. Um, yeah, they, 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 do, they, they, are, they are a longer lasting flight, uh, especially for a, a competitive player that uh, groups of darts very close together. Uh, your, your, your shafts uh, and flights will last a lot longer, plus the, the design keeps the, um, the, the chance of a, a bow and arrow or you know, landing one dart on top of the other is almost non-existent anymore uh, with that style. Right, and so that's uh, one advantage. You're not going to have to worry about losing a dart because they hit the other flight and then bounced out. Right. Now I remember you were sponsored by Harlow's back in the late '80s, early '90s. I, re I remember having a set of the Bob Sinev signature darts. Um, I hope you've kept a lot of the, the memorabilia from back then. Well, actually, the 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 dart that actually uh, it was made for me it wasn't Harold's. It was. Uh, laser darts and they actually the name they, they were supposed to put my name on it but they didn't and uh, they actually named it Phantom okay and, and, and uh, I wasn't aware of it but when we signed up with, with L Style from Japan they or should should they monster I showed him the dart and uh, he said you know I told him the name of it and uh, he said that dart itself really changed the influence of style of darts in, in Asia Right, it, it, because of the torpedo shape over there, it was all like a pencil dart before that. But when that dart came out, right, all the manufacturers over there changed their whole uh, concept of how to design darts, and so it really widened the variety of darts that were made available, different shapes and so forth. Well, I, I apologize. I always assumed that you were sponsored by Harls. It was such a, I guess, a big name because they sponsored Eric back then, and they never really seemed to take on many of the other players. It seemed like Eric was with Harls and. Uh, your Cliff Lazarenko's, John Lowe's were all with Unicorn back then, but uh, interesting. We'll have to see if we can... Yeah, but back then, actually, I was uh, I was sent a contract from Unicorn. They wanted me to sign up, and, but the, because I was a family man and I, and I wasn't going to be moving to England, that's a lot of people said I should have, but uh, because of my family commitments and so forth here, I, I chose not to sign the contract because there were a lot more demands for me to be over in England and Europe. And so it wasn't, you know, if they were going to, if they were going to offer me fifty, seventy-five thousand pounds or something like that, then I can, might consider. But it was very, very minimal compared to what they were asking for. So I, I turned that contract down. Right. So now you're back involved. You're back in the circuit, um, and now you're involved. Uh, you're the president of the NAPDA. Tell us a little bit about uh, what you've created. I know there's others that are involved in it as well with you, and and sort of what your mission is with uh, with the new association. Yeah, the, the NAPDA is something that I've been looking at trying to establish probably for two years. Uh, the PDC tried to bring a number of the, their big events over here and promote it from uh, the British standpoint uh, point of view, uh, promoting the game using the British players. But uh, And they had it on ESPN and so forth, but it didn't take off because primarily it was a showcase for the British players. and. The U.S. market, where they were trying to break into, uh, Americans follow Americans. They'll support Americans. You know, they're, they're, they've always approached the game as being number one. And so, you know, there's no U.S. players in the or North American players in the televised events. The the uh, following of, uh, on TV dropped off drastically. So they backed away a little over a year ago. And so I figured it was probably the best time to jumpstart my uh, NAPDA. The, North American Professional Darts Alliance, and it, it, it originally was designed to promote the game from the viewpoint of the dart players themselves, to represent them. Uh, it's progressed a little bit further than that. Uh, we're getting get more involved with trying to set up uh, events that have longer format um, seating and larger prize structure. and. Uh, yeah, the, the aim of it is to uh, try and get it on the internet, just like um, Parker did originally, to get the following and then gradually develop it to advance into the TV. Right. No, I, I, and I guess that's always been an issue for darts, is sponsorship, prize money. 
um, in finding the real uh, the companies that are that are searching for that demographic to uh, to brand and market their own their own company. Um, I think it's always been a, a difficulty for darts. Yeah, like in North America, the with the, with the British, they they were highlighting and promoting their players, and uh, that was the whole design of their uh, their tournament. So they figured that because of the following of the game, that it would uh, progress in North America. But here in North America, we have to develop North American celebrities, so to speak. Right. And, and then you start getting the general public to follow it more on a on a wider basis, rather than just the diehard dart followers. Um, that's that's the aim is to, you know, create events that will, you know, highlight and make celebrities out of the dart players themselves to draw in bigger uh, following, and as a result, the following, bigger following will bring in the bigger sponsors. Right. I mean, it's interesting when you think back to uh, your first um, time around through the dart industry. I mean, the characters that were involved back then, Jockey Wilson, uh, who unfortunately passed away this year, Cliff Lazarenko, I mean, I remember tournaments when they're on stage with a cigarette and a beer in their hand. Not that that's what we want promoted on television, um, but they they were celebrity, huge celebrities back through England back then, and characters as well. I guess, um, I guess even in darts for for North America, you really need to build on the personalities if there is an opportunity to build an exposure through web, um, certainly through TV of the, of the personalities behind the players. Um, sort of like people got following wrestling and then ultimate fighting championship and such to it that ability really be the player that creates a, a following and can really build you a, a real market i think out there well yeah exactly you, you, you have to uh, present uh, an avenue for the player to expose their abilities plus their characters which whether it's through internet or tv and, and that will draw in people on the general public to follow it and again like i say create celebrities and uh, then then the uh, sponsors will, you know, it's sort of a catch-22. You have the celebrity status first for the big sponsors to come in, but you have to have the sponsors to be able to provide the venues to create celebrities. It, it's it's going to be a long road. Yeah. Uh, it's nothing that's going to be easy to accomplish, but it's, it's an endeavor that I uh, very much want to try and tackle. Well, congratulations to you for... Uh for getting involved in and really trying to put something together. Now, are you affiliated, um, and I don't want to get to the politics of it, is it affiliated with the National Darts Federation of Canada, the WDF, obviously, or the PDC, or is it something that you've done completely all on its own? Well, it started out on our, on our own. Uh, we're in the process. We are affiliated with the NDFC as well as the ADO already. Uh, we're in the process of negotiation to be affiliated with the Professional Dart Players Association. Uh, also with the Darts Regulation Authority. We have not approached the uh, WDF, the BDO, or the PDC at this point in time because we want to promote North America. That's the title of the, of the NAPDA, North America. And, and that's, we haven't looked at If they want to offer us, say, spots at their big events, that's fine. Right. But it's not the end and all and, uh, to uh, what we're trying to accomplish. We, we're trying to do something that's primarily geared around promoting North American players for tournaments here in North America. Right. Uh, we do have seven uh, sanctioned events this year. They're, they're not big key, but there will be some TV coverage, or not TV, but uh, internet coverage on them. Um, and the first one was just uh, held this past uh, week or week and a half ago at Manistee in Michigan. Okay. Uh, the first one. Um, yeah, but like you say, it's 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 a long, long process. It's a stepping stone that you have to learn on the, as you go along, sort of thing, trying to make and promote it. Great. Now, is there an upcoming event in Ontario where everyone can get out, have a look at the NAPDA, and 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 see you there as well? Is there something coming up here in Ontario? Yeah, the one in London. It's coming up in in the end of August. There's one that'll be in London uh, downtown. Uh, it's tagged along with one of the uh, PDC events on the Saturday, the Sunday at the PDC event, but it's a North American uh, series as well. Excuse right. me. And, uh, and like I said, there's two singles that week. Uh, one's for the NAPDA and one is the PDC. But uh, it's, it, I don't um, look to interfere with anybody else's efforts to promote North America because, uh, you know, we have to work together. That's, again, we, we're very... Um, delivered in the name we chose, the North American Professional Dark Alliance. Yes. And, and that's the whole thing. Alliance is a very important word because uh, the country's too big for one group 
to make it work by himself. Uh, that's the way I look at it. So we try and work uh, with all the organizations and anybody that, and any uh, group that looks to try and promote and elevate the game here in North America. Wonderful. Well, I commend you on your efforts. It's uh, it's not an, not an easy road, especially in the dart industry where there's there are little sponsors. But uh, I think with someone like yourself, with your experience, certainly um, that the players are in good hands. So I, I do wish you all the best of luck with it all. Now, the website for people to get more information, uh, the NAPDA.net, correct? Is the website? Yeah, it's, it's very straightforward. Uh, and uh, if anybody that's uh, interested in following it, uh, they, we do have results from different events and tournaments throughout the year that is on there, plus the rankings. Like, we do have a ranking system that uh, I've developed. That was the first step that I felt was very necessary, uh, is to develop it over a two-year period, not just a one-shot deal. Right. And uh, so it's, it's a lot of work to get that established. Once I had that, that's when we decided to take the next step to develop the site and into uh, promoting the sport. Now, your own darts, I mean, not only are you involved in running the events, now that you're, you're president of the NAPDA, um, but you're also at the point where you're trying to elevate your game. So I guess you've got a lot going on. You've got a lot of balls in the air, so to speak. <laughs> yes, I do. But I mean, I, I'm, I, I guess you could say I'm, I'm playing and promoting at the same time. Uh, at times it can be difficult, but I mean, uh, uh, I've been fairly successful in the in the ranking system that I developed over two years. Uh, it, I'm number three on that one, and then they have also the um, the Ben Pro rankings they call it, uh, which is promoted and developed by uh, Bullseye Marketing Incorporated. Yes, uh, I'm number three on that one as well. So it sort of justifies my positioning on my own ranking system. <laughs> but at the same time, it, if you look at theirs, it's the same position. So it, it's not a case of me. Trumping, I hope people don't look at it as trying to trump my own successes. Uh, no, I'm, I'm sure they don't. Um, you've done some wonderful things for the game in your previous tenure, um, and certainly now, especially taking the time. I mean, it's it's uh, it's always a volunteer position within dart organizations and industry. So I think you're uh, you're doing a wonderful thing, and um, I hope the players recognize that and uh, and appreciate it. Well, everybody, Bob Sinead, five-time Canadian champion, now back again in the game. Uh, find out more about Bob, North American Professional Dart Alliance, NAPDA.net. Um, and I guess they'll be able to see you in London, Ontario at the end of August. Is that correct? Oh, yes, we'll be there. Good. I cannot thank you enough. I um, Again, I have great memories playing darts as a youth player back in the 80s and 90s. The first dart exhibition I went to here in Mississauga uh, was your own back in January, I guess, 1988. I've got... Uh, I'll have to find the pictures over there. Maybe I can post it. But we were all a we were all a little bit younger back then. Oh, I appreciate the call. No problem. Thanks, Bob. Take care and have a great day. Yeah, you're welcome. Bye bye. Thank you, Bob Sinev, five-time Canadian champion. Amazing to see him come right back into the sport, to the game, um, and get himself right back up the rankings again. Like he's saying, Bullseye News. He's ranked number three again in North America. This is someone back late '80s, early '90s. We're not talking about yesterday. Um, at the prime of his game, and he's, he's relinquished it again. So he's doing fantastic. So thank you, Bob, for taking the time with us. Uh, we greatly appreciate it. And I hope some of you coming up through the Dart Leagues, the tournaments, recognize what a great opportunity to get better. Join up with North American Professional Dart Alliance, NAPDA. Um, have a chance to play against some of the better players from right across North America. And again, like Bob mentioned, London, Ontario, uh, Flyers here for it late August. EDC event will be there. So the pros will be there. What a great chance to see all the best of darts. And again, a chance to register for Bob's association group, the NAPDA, um, and get a chance to play against local players uh, from Ontario, maybe through some of the states, uh, northeast states in the U.S. that are close by. Um, and probably a great weekend down there in London, Ontario. I believe it's at the Hilton. Um, it always was held. It is actually Hilton, 300 King Street in London, the weekend of August 24th to 26th. BullseyeNews.com will have this flyer and more information regarding the PDC event that's there. What a great thing to get to. 2012, who knew that uh, Bob Sneed would be back up the rankings, um, doing as great as he is. It's funny, he said he quit playing in 92, and it was 94 that John Parr won his first world championship. So for Canadians, it was like we had the greatest North American player, Bob Sneed, just leave the game. And wow, John Part sort of popped up right afterwards and, uh, and sort of took over from where Bob left off. Two great players, and I will go on record saying two of the greatest players North America ever had from right here in Ontario.
Anyway, this is Darts. I apologize. It's been a long time since we put a show together. Um, but it was really going to take something fantastic to occur to get me back on here. Something great to talk about. And it was reading this week uh, an article written about Bob uh, in a Simcoe newspaper that popped up on Facebook that I said, you know something? We need to get the word out. Bob's doing something great. I mean, this is volunteer hours. This certainly, you don't get involved in dart leagues and tournaments to supplement your income or get rich, by no means. Um, but there's somebody with a lot of volunteer hours involved in something for the benefit of the sport and most importantly for the benefit of the players. So, great thing that you're doing, Bob. We appreciate it. We love reading about things like this. And uh, for all of you, get to the NADPA.net to learn more. Well, Hot Shots, we're July already. Uh, lots of great things happening here. A lot of great things happening dart-wise. Now, you need to follow our newsletters to really take advantage of some of these great things. So get on to Hot Shots Games dot com and it says sign up for our newsletter put your email address in there and submit and the reason why is lots of great specials lots of new products um, free shipping through the summer for dart orders of a hundred dollars and more a lot of new products from Cosmo L style I'll certainly be tracking where Bob Sinef signature darts are coming from and getting them in stock a lot of great things are happening here at Hot Shots for the dart player um, and league uh, executive, if you're out there watching this, anywhere in Ontario, um, actually anywhere in North America, we have great affiliate programs for you. Raise money for your Dart League. Post a banner from Hot Shots with the correct linking code and you'll be able to generate revenue. Go towards your banquet, your trophies, your prizes at the end of the season and such. So HotShotsGames.com, the affiliate programs on there and league reps from around the greater Toronto area, get in touch with me. We're doing something special from Hot Shots for you and for your players. So email me, scott at hotshotsgames.com. Let me know if you're in the executive of a local dart league, the provincial body, whatever it is, let me know where you're at. We've got lots of great things to post on your website, generate some revenue for you and your dart league, association, organization, alliance, whatever it is. And as well, we've got great things for the leagues in the area to, uh, to do for September and even through the summer. Why not? Send me an email, scott at hotshotsgames.com. Let me know what you're involved in. I'll let you know how we can help. So, as always, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed a quick little interview with Bob Sineve. He's doing great things, and we, uh, we certainly appreciate what he's up to. And you, I hope you're enjoying darts. I hope you're staying cool this summer. We've had some of the hottest days ever on record. I hope you've been inside playing some darts, staying cool, and enjoying the game. As always, everybody, thank you for watching. Have a great day.